This is the Vivo 450 airless sprayer. In this video, I'll show you everything you want to know about this great little powerhouse of a paint sprayer. It costed me 320 Australian dollars, including delivery to my home. It's got 1500 watts of power, a maximum flow rate of 2.2 liters per minute, and has a maximum pressure of 3300 psi. I'll also show you exactly how this sprayer works, so you can see it in operation on the project at my home. Now we're renovating our double garage. It's got brick walls with raked out joints that need painting. I hate painting as much as the next guy, so I wasn't gonna do this by brush or roller. No way, mate, or else I'd never get it done. So I purchased the Vivo 450 airless sprayer. First, the unboxing. So I was first surprised by just how much this thing weighs. Like there's a bigger weight in this, so it feels quite well made. I'll be going through each of these parts and components. Here it is all laid out up on the table, everything that you get in the box. Now I have never used an airless sprayer before, so this is all new to me, but first impressions are quite good. I mean, I compared this to some Wagner and Graco airless sprayers available at Bunnings hardware stores. They costed between $1,500 to $2,000. And to be honest, this looks and feels very similar. This is where the hose connects into. The paint comes out from there. Every time you use this machine, you need to put four or five drops of oil there. That's the on-off switch button. It's got a reset button below. And this is where you adjust the pressure, the pressure regulator. Here's the airless spray gun itself. I mean, I don't know it any better. It still looks and feels quite good to me. I did compare this to some that I saw at my local hardware, and it looks the same. This is an extension wand if you want to get those high uh, reach areas like ceilings. Here we have the blue air hose. Uh, it's 15 meters long. And this is a 517 nozzle. I'll show you more about this later. And this is the paint suction hose. It's got a mesh on the front and there's also a pressure release hose on here as well. So let me show you how it all connects up. So when you turn it up from the bottom, this is where your suction hose will plug into. So that went in quite nicely for me. I did find it tricky to put on this spring retaining clip. It took me a few minutes. I got there in the end, I had to use a screwdriver, but it's important to get it into the fine cutout grooves so that it doesn't uh, plonk out. Once it's all in, you can actually position it around to where it's most convenient. And then you put in your pressure relief hose, just insert it in and it bites in and it stays in. So next we need to put on the hose itself onto the outlet of the airless sprayer and just tighten it up. I'm using something like a 19 millimeter spanner. We connect the other end onto the spray gun itself. And I just tighten it with a spanner and a vice clamp. Now I put on the extension onto the gun. It comes with like this little washer. However, I did find I had to use some threaded tape or else this will leak. That's the only down point. And I'll show you the threaded tape on here later on. Now checking out what's called the 517 airless spray head. I don't know much about these, but this seems to be a generic one for painting walls, you know, and you know, once I figured out how it all works, I was pretty happy with how it worked. So I'm just inserting this little um, component there. Once you put it in, then you put in the spray nozzle itself. And you'll see you can turn it around. One side gives a wide fan spray. And sometimes when it gets blocked up, you turn it around and unclog it with the more narrow fan spray. Anyway, I'm learning as I go. That's the way it works. It recommends putting in some oil. I just use air tool oil. So just a couple of drops and you're good to go. It keeps the motor lubed up. Now I'm just gonna test this just using water before I plonk it into some paint itself. Now I've already pre-primed this. There's water in the line. So here's an idea what it's like. Yeah. 
that's like the wide spray of the nozzle. I turned it off and that's just me releasing the pressure at the end of a spray. And then you can see here where I put the threaded tape, see that yellow tape? Now I found that I had to do that or else water leaks out. I've also found that paint will leak out if you don't uh, put some tape there. All right, time for business, time for some action finally. So here we're all set up, ready to go. Here's my project. There's the uh, raked out brick that there's no way in the world that I'm gonna paint by roller or by hand or else it'll take me forever. Now, bear in mind, I am no painter. I've got no idea what I'm doing. I know that there's probably a myriad of ways to do this better, but this is me learning as I go. Uh, let's see what this machine can do, shall we? It's a good idea to wear these. I bought this, but I never wore it myself. I like the smell of paint fumes. Just joking, I did put on a mask. So you gotta have some water nearby. Get all your paint ready, mix it up. Yeah, okay, here we go. We mean business now, this is it. Let's get excited, get some action. This is my very first run. Now you can probably see the spray has some thicker lines at the edges. Once again, this is me just getting an initial feel for the settings and I had to adjust the pressure here to get rid of those lines afterwards. Once again, you learn as you go. Over here, I have actually adjusted the pressure and it's starting to look a whole lot better in my opinion, in my unprofessional opinion. Hey, I'm happy with how it's going. So yeah, this is the very first coat that I've put up. It took me 40 minutes to do all the ceilings and all the walls with the very first primer coat. I used about 10 liters of paint and I thinned it to about 10% of water. Let's go with the second coat. And over here we are seeing I'm putting actually on the third coat. So I've done one undercoat and this is two coats of the finish. So this is the last coat that I'm putting on. I am using a water-based semi-gloss. This is just straight white. We use this on all the walls and all the ceilings. Very happy with a semi-gloss finish. I really like how the wand is able to get right into those hard to reach areas. Now in terms of overspray, um, apparently if you buy different nozzles, some nozzles can help reduce overspray, but I really don't think there's any escaping it. Just using this tool, there is overspray. I had to wear a mask. It's probably another reason why I'm just using white everywhere and not uh, using different colors. Overspray, from what I read and understand is a problem with all airless sprayers. 
and you just deal with it as best as you can. But I certainly am not complaining about how the paint is going on. Check it out. This is the third and final coat and it's going on just fine in my opinion. This is sort of after I finish the job. This gives you a close up view of what I've just painted. We've pulled off our plastic protection sheets and look, just over 300 bucks, mate, delivered to my door. This tool threw paint up and I was very, very happy with the end result. Mate, I knocked this over so fast, it's not funny. I can't complain, check it out. Looks great to me. And most importantly, the wife was happy that the job got done. <laughs> so, the Vivor 450 airless sprayer. Cheap as chips. Gets paint up on the wall. I'm happy. Wife's happy. Everybody's happy. Thanks for watching the video. Catch you on the next one.